So uh, we're called to order. Alan has sent his minutes. Um, does, is there any discussion about Alan's minutes? I'll move to accept. Okay. Yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, so the first item on the agenda um, is uh, I, Allison and uh, uh, Allison. And you you want me to talk and type and at the same time? <laughs> well, or you're you talented. Can, you can do okay. What I do when I do this is just use a pencil and do the minutes. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. But that's up to you. <laughs> All right. Did you have a question for me? Well, you. It was you who was talking. Uh, brought up the subject of the various the, the history of the town in public oh, yeah. places. Yes. Yes. Well, um, you want me to talk about that just for a minute? Yes. <laughs> uh, we noticed it, Susan, in the um, fundraising letter uh, for the 250th, which uh, I can't quote, I guess, verbatim, but pretty much made the statement that the history of the town began in the 1600s. It is in the OS open space plan blurb. Donna, isn't that what you extracted and sent me? Well, the, the open space plan has a better one. The one on the town website right. is not a whole heck of a lot better. <laughs> no, that. there's one on the town <laughs> website. There's one in this open space thing. Yeah. Um, I, thought I, we raised, fixed, I, I thought, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I thought we fixed that in the open space one. That's what well, I was just have, saying, that it seems like the best. It seems like the best thus far. <laughs> right. Well, no, but we put in the about uh, back to the no. early earliest days. I mean, no, I can remember my, 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 my deep my deep objection, my basic objection to these statements is, uh, and I'm not trying to be all woke and you know PC about it, but they they, they pretty much just uh, start with this assumption that white people just came in the 1600s and that's where uh, you know time began. Yeah, and, but I think um, that's they don't what, even they don't even bother to say that there was English people that came. It's just that it's it's almost as if it's we came, you know, in the 1600s, which I find objectionable. So I when Al when Allison said this to me, I said I haven't looked at the town's history on the website for a while, um, which it does came, it came which, from the old open space plan, which, right and that's interesting and then, but i think i think the wording is the point which is somewhat more respectful of native americans but not thorough the the version in the new open space plan it to my mind is which i just sent to you all a day ago <laughs> more or less so i'm not surprised if you haven't all read it is a is better yet i think um I I would like to propose that we give Allison some work and that you take those you couple of paragraphs <laughs> and and revise them. And I think as soon as this as soon as this committee says please replace what's on the town's website with this, it it will happen. I mean, this is not a you know a town meeting vote. Um, All right. All right. I believe. Sure, oh, it's, just a, it's just a question of a couple of sentences that need expanding and you know reconfiguration. I don't think it's anything anybody's going to get contentious about, but but it, it it doesn't it doesn't ring well these days. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find it on the two fiftieth website too. Yeah. Well, I actually laughed when I looked at the town's website because the heading reads historical Waitley. And I immediately thought, oh, my jaw hurts. It should be historic Waitley. <laughs> you know? But then that's not that's very easily fixed. Um, Susan, do you think would you would you be amenable, do you think, to a possible revision to whatever the 250th website says? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know what I mean, I, Susan? I, I'm sorry. Did, do you know what I'm referring to? Um, actually, no, but I'm sure it's in the fundraising, some... yeah, oh, it's in the, the fundraising, fundraising package. Letter, yeah. yeah, the fundraising letter. Yeah, I'm, I was, but now we at this point, we can't really change, 
but the um, 250 well, website we can. You might send out another letter sometime. I don't know, you know. If, if we reissue it, yeah, I'm just not sure that given that we have gotten zero dollars back from that, I don't know that we're going to put- Well, maybe we need a new edition of and send the letter out again. It'll look like a new effort. <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Um, so it wasn't this group. It was several. I know Allison and Judy were involved. Um, just by coincidence, uh, during the last month, the librarian, actually the librarian's assistant, who has just left, Rebecca, yes, wrote to several people to say, we've had three different people come in in the last month interested in learning more about Native American life in Waitley before there was a Waitley. Obviously, that's the point. Um, could you give us some help in uh, how to respond to those inquiries? Um, and we've sent various things and I can't remember if either Rebecca or Cindy said thank you, <laughs> but they <laughs> but they asked, which was good. <laughs> oh, Rebecca, oh, sent a, she said, Re Rebecca sent a thank you. Yes, she did. You're right, she did. And then and then or then we sent some more things. I mean, it's it's an interesting topic because there aren't many books, which was her first question. You have to. Which go reminds to me that we ought to include those on the. Historical Society bibliographical resource page. That's a good well, idea. I think we all were part of sort of the same discussion that they referred to that Pocomtuck issue of the historic uh, Deerfield Magazine, Judy, which I know yeah. you've seen, which is a, a good resource. And, but one of the ways it's a good resource is if you just look at the footnotes that everybody yeah. put 38 of in their articles, um, the bibliography you can create from those footnotes is pretty comprehensive and addresses what we're talking about here. Yeah, I, I pointed that out to Rebecca too. Yeah, yeah. It leads you, it leads you on, and it's yes. and it's a good starting point. And then if you're interested, you right, you can pursue. And, and actually, actually, this is this is um, I, several of us more or less simultaneously said in response to the library, if you're not getting the historic Deerfield magazine, that's gonna be one of the best sources of, of secondary um, information and maybe the library should subscribe. So I'm, not, I'm saying this to remind myself that the next time I go in the library, I will ask Cindy, did you, you know, do you have a subscription to historic Deerfield? Because they have very inexpensive, well, I mean, their membership isn't expensive anyway, but they I have know, I know less from, expensive ones for life. Yeah, I know from doing, from doing the design on the annual report that, that I believe the, the Dickinson Library has a library membership to Historic Deerfield. I don't know what's special about that, if it's just a cheap rate and you don't get a magazine because it's so cheap, I don't know. But they ought to be getting it, I would think. It, it means yeah. they get a guest pass that they can lend. Okay. Right. It's one of I mean, those. or that's part of it anyway. So yeah. That's part, no, that's, that's separate. That's a separate uh, purchase. Okay. I think, but what we should find out. So, um, okay. So, Allison, it's your idea when you want to yeah. bring it back. <laughs> My big bad <laughs> idea. Okay. When you want to bring it back, we'll all say that's terrific. I'm going to okay. predict. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so let's go on to um, discuss the cemetery commissioners have applied uh, for CPA funding under the um, cemetery, uh, under the historic preservation rubric. Um, and we should talk about that, about how we want to respond to that. Um, has, has everyone had a chance to look at the material? I sent it out maybe two or three weeks ago. Yep. Yep. Briefly, I have not gone through all of it, but that's okay. Okay. Um, Judy, I know you have some things that you want to say. So <laughs> why don't you go first, if, unless someone else is wishing to speak first? Well, I, I'm afraid I have a lot of questions and no answers, but um, the proposal is basically the historic preservation part of it. There are two parts of it. One is uh, to remove. Here's Darcy uh, to help answer questions. <laughs> good. 
to, to remove all of the chain link fence fences at the east and west cemeteries, or at least the gates in, in the west cemetery, maybe not the fence. Um, it's chain link gant, gates and another kind of fence there, I guess. And to replace the east ones with split rail fencing on three sides. And because the chain link fence is historically inappropriate. And I mean, it's obviously historically appropriate to the period when it was put in. I was gonna say, yeah, it's, it's very mid-mo. Yeah, um, <laughs> and that's, it's a phrase I use historically inappropriate where somebody restores something they think they're getting it to the right period and they don't kind of thing. Like, like when they restored town hall with nice 1740 things instead of nice 1840 things, you know, in the, in the 1770s. So to me, that's historically inappropriate. But anyway, there are a lot of periods for the cemeteries dates. Um, I started wondering how old, how old these chain link fence is, and I haven't been able to track it down. I don't know if Darcy, it was there in 1993 when the inventory form was done. In 1985 and in 1971, the cemetery commission or 79, the cemetery commission reported that they were painting a metal fence but there's no sign of paint on the chain link fence. So that's a mystery. Um, so it would, one would presuppose that there was another fence before that, but I don't know. Um, repairs were done to the metal fence in 1971. So a metal fence was there in 1971. If that was the chain link fence, and there's a lot of doubt about that, um, given that there's no paint on the chain link fence, um, then that would be a historic resource and we obviously shouldn't be using preservation money to remove a historic resource. Um, Can I ask a stupid question? Is there a, 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 a cutoff date for when something becomes historic? Like an antique car isn't considered antique until it's 25 years old. Do we have- The standard, a the standard that I think is, we've used, I think is typically used is 50 years because that's, when something becomes contributing for a national register district or I so that's that's the one I'm using whether that's the right one or not um, all right so that covers most of us at this meeting yes even Darcy. probably bills even Darcy yes. <laughs> bills oh, I'm not sure so I <laughs> <laughs> but like last week or something <laughs> no come on <laughs> so I sent the the communication, I the preservation guidelines I sent to you to Neil and Darcy and asked if they had any information on the date of the fence and they weren't. They didn't. And I meant to call Adelia and didn't get to it, but I did I go through all the town reports. I'm sorry, Darcy. I think Neil did ask and she doesn't remember. Okay. Yeah. Um, because she was cemetery commission commissioner. For a long for, time. Yeah. For a very long time. I went through the town reports from 1991, which we cover 1990, um, back to 1972 and just found those references to painting and repairs of the metal fence. So I didn't find anything about putting in a new fence. So. Um, so there's that question. And then there's a question of if in fact there would have been a fence earlier. Because, right. Because, you know, picking the split rail fence makes sense for early 18th century, but there's no documentation that there ever was a fence. And right. If it was, it probably wouldn't have been there because it would have fenced in, or I don't know whether you're fencing. I think you're fencing out. Yes, that is the idea. Well, <laughs> well some, some 
there's a reference. This I think it's in this. I found two preservation things about cemeteries. Some some cemeteries actually had fences for animals to graze, keep animals in grazing there. They didn't have lawn mowers. They were they were unkempt, you know, the long grass. So it's less common. So I don't know whether this qualifies as historic preservation or not. If we're putting a fence in, we can't document one that it's a type that was ever there. Um, the reports about the state of the fencing, the state of the cemeteries prior in the 18, mid 19th century are that they were kind of graves scattered, helter skelter with no plan, um, no fencing. They, if you read the inventory form, it says for East Cemetery, it says that when John Lane spruced up the center cemetery, then the town decided they better have fences at the at the east and west cemeteries. And they voted $100 to do that. But that was in, in the 1870s. So, um, so I, I, I just a question, does this qualify for historic preservation money? I, to me, I think you could make a case that it would be like the in some sense, like the Veterans Memorial, where you're taking an existing entity and improving its looks and making it more functional and useful, but that might be more considered park improvements and recreation funding. So I didn't know whether we might want to recommend that, that the whole entity be recreation funding rather than including a historic preservation segment. Um, I wonder if we could um, uh, just uh, hold that idea for a moment, um, because I, I would like to present um, a, a different uh, perspective on the appropriateness of the proposal, um, which is to think about it not so much as a proposal about fencing, but a proposal that is about preserving the historic landscape. Um, and I'd like to just remind everybody that we revised our, our own priorities for CPA funding in October in the minutes <laughs> that we just approved. And the second point is preserve, rehabilitate, and document gravestones and landscapes in the town cemeteries. Um, the, the pertinence of that is twofold. One is that putting fencing up um, you know, whether it is split rail fencing or a lovely wrought iron fencing with granite posts or whatever it is, prevents people from driving willy-nilly into the cemetery, which has apparently been a, a problem or a risk. Um, the other is that um, the cemetery is full of invasive plants, bittersweet, um, poison ivy, multiflora rose, which one are you talking about? The East Cemetery. East. The East Cemetery, since most of this is about, and I should have said, by the way, I don't think the benches are about historic preservation because no. they're, 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 they, are, they are really recreation. Sorry, I should have said that first. They're the yeah. little mm -hmm. rectilinear granite mm -hmm. benches that have just been put in the center of town. Um, so, but um, the bittersweet has already been threatening to writ just destroy those hydrangea trees. And the problem with the, and I don't need to tell any of you what poison ivy and multiflora rose can do. And the problem right now is that the chain link fence, well, first of all, it doesn't need, it's not safe. <laughs> it's literally- um, Illegal. <laughs> illegal, thank you. That's, yes, thank you. It is illegal. It does not meet code. And, it, and it's so low that they, it can't be mowed underneath. J Darcy, could you elaborate on this? <laughs> Yeah, you, can't string, you can't string trim under the chain link fence. So it, it, it gets overgrown and then we have to go through every now and then and get it pulled back out again. And, and if we had a fence that could be elevated underneath, be it split rail or wrought iron or whatever, we can trim around it a lot easier and keep it clean and keep those vines back. Yeah. So, so I, um, you know, thinking about this and, and mindful 
about of the concern that you've raised, um, Judy. I went back through the uh, inventory of CPA grants that have been approved across the state under all of which have been approved in, entirely under the historic preservation rubric. One of the database is really clunky and hard to use, but one of the good things is it actually shows you how much of the dollars that have approved how, were from each of those buckets. And um, I could torture you by reading them all and I would be happy to read them all to you if you wish, I'm being really serious. But there are multiple examples, um, both about cemeteries and about other historic sites that are clearly about, well, one is strictly for removing poison ivy, just $4,200 to remove poison ivy. And, but several are to install fencing where there has not been fencing to protect the cemetery from, um, hazard, from pedestrian or more for, from auto be, automobile um, and kind of you know, ATV type incursions. Um, a really interesting one, and this is kind of a diversion, but it surprised me because of the 50 year um, business, is that Amherst has just voted $60,000 all under the historic preservation rubric to replace the picket fence that was installed 18 years ago along the North Cemeteries on East Pleasant Street. And, and they're replacing that with um, treated wood materials that will maintain the historic character and not decay, which made me frown. I mean, I, I thought that was really interesting because that seemed, um, and that has been approved under the historic preservation rubric. So I, I, guess, um, I guess my main point is that I think improving- Ooh, Excuse me, Donna. With that yeah. one, they're replacing a wooden picket fence that's 18 years old with another Which, wooden picket with, fence. With a treated wood decay, yeah. right. I, I, yeah. think, I don't- you think what? I don't think treated wood is is a problem myself, but that's I just what yeah. I wasn't uh -huh. sure I okay. heard that I wasn't yeah. sure I heard the yeah. date right. So so I I believe that this proposal, setting aside the benches, is consistent with the idea of preserving the landscape and managing the historic landscape in a responsible way. Um, split rail. Fences, I did a little research. I mean, you're absolutely right, Judy. We have no idea if there was a split rail fence at this um, cemetery, but I found several pieces of evidence, kind of historic uh, articles about the use of split rail fence in Western, Mass Western Connecticut. Um, I don't mean that it excluded Western Massachusetts, but I read Western Connecticut as consistent enough with our part of the world to be relevant. Um, the earliest ones interesting were the ones that, you know, that are overlaid. They're, they're sort of yep. zigzag. Well, yeah. that's, that's one question. Is there, yeah. I think that the, I was the gonna ask when they they're say- They're called so pal really. palisades is what they're called, yes. Um, my brother who, who did uh, historical Americana for his, in college, I uh, asked whether this the fence was one of those zigzag overlaid ones or, or the kind with a pole. And I honestly didn't know which is the, I would have thought that the zigzag were the more historically accurate for that period, but I have no idea. So, um, but those would be very difficult to maintain and wouldn't solve the invasive problem. And require a lot more wood. Right. Yes. I mean, Darcy, do you want to talk a little bit about how you how you um, landed on the split rail solution? I think it was the most economically reasonable that still allowed us to very easily maintain the landscape underneath it and like historically not so offensive. <laughs> I mean, we're just simply we cannot if we even start to repair the chain link fence at East, it legally all has to come down. So then we have to do something about it. And so we're trying to figure out 
what the best approach is for that. And, and you've already had one problem with the very nice farmers who live, have the property right next door, knocking part of the fence down by accident, right? Well, that, that's why we're in the pickle of replacing it in the first place is because it's broken. It's yeah. like all mangled on, on the east side of it. So it, it has to be dealt with. And by starting dealing with it, we're going to start the whole dilemma of it all having to come down. So that put us in that position. And, and we just landed on, you know, we've seen other towns replacing their fencing around their cemeteries, you know, with CPA funds. And a lot of them have been using like granite posts with split rails. And it just seemed like a logical, like easy solution that didn't seem historically defensive. So that's where we landed. Any other comments or questions? Alan, you're muted. Didn't realize that. Okay. <clears throat> Is this a dispute between two different forms of community preservation back funding? And does it mean that the proposal might need to be revised? Or is I'm not sure I'm, what is going on here? Well, if if the commission found that it wasn't really qualified for historic preservation, then I think it could go forward entirely as recreation funding. So I don't think it means jeopardizing the application. But we don't know that. But we don't, we don't know that. We don't know what the recreation commission's response would be. And right. we don't know whether the Recreation Commission will approve the, the um, benches either, so, or what the town will do for that matter. Right, but that's, that's not what we're talking about right now. No. It still seems like a landscape thing for me. Like, whether you're talking historical or not, it's, it is preserving the landscape of East Cemetery. Otherwise, they're going to have stones wiped out by farm equipment left and right. I mean, we've had a hard, hard enough time with the fencing. Yeah. And well, I, and you're also setting a precedent for, you know, what might need to happen in the other cemeteries at some point when fencing becomes an issue there. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is the one that's the most sensitive to equipment being used around it. You know, there, there already is fencing to the front of, of Center Cemetery for, you know, automobiles and such the other sides don't really have much of an issue well uh, the, yeah yes go sort ahead. Of. in what way well one of the, the north side of the center cemetery is borders the quan quan property yep yeah and uh you know the town was not concerned about the historical appearance of a water pump house station being planted <laughs> right there so much yep. Um, but they're but they're historically and it, it, it might be 50 years old has been livestock fencing on that side, which yep. at one time actually kept out sheep and cows uh, yep. from going into the cemetery, but more recently has kept out sort of because the fence has been for shit for a while. Um, dog walkers and their <laughs> is bags. It, is, is that a technical description? Well, as Darcy, is that an accurate description? <laughs> it's accurate. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, has kept the dog walkers in their plastic poop bags, you know, from wander. And um, the uh, uh, Peloton bikers and their bathroom situation from wandering into <laughs> our property. Yeah. Well, that oh. is already on the table in agreement with the, the, the uh, right. pump housing Just plan. Neil. Right. Yes. And, and yeah. I'm wondering now if that created a problem for you. I was suggesting that fencing because I thought it was just cheap and easy and you know, did the job. But. Yeah, I mean, that's all, there's no, like, in terms of that fencing, it's just that the fencing needs to be maintained. There's no stipulation in that deed about what type of fencing is there. And we're just gonna like replace or repair what's already there. And that is not an illegal 
illegally coded type of fencing that's there now. So we can just you know, because it's very invisible as it is. Right. Like we, but that's yeah. a, a place where sprit rail wouldn't do the job because it wouldn't stop no. the pissing no. biker or the shitting dog. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yes. But, but, yeah. but I, but I think, I, I mean, I, I, I do want to hang and forgive me, I'm going to, I'm going to repeat myself on the notion of preserving the landscape by enabling the cemetery commissioners to manage the invasives. Yeah, that's the key. You know, and, and I, you know, that when I spent three or four hours going through the CPA index um, last summer, I think it was, I discovered a good dozen grants that were made specifically and exclusively to um, for the management of invasives on historic sites in a number of towns, all funded entirely under historic preservation. Interesting. Um, yes, it's really I, I didn't, I mean, we didn't, I didn't harangue you on this enough that I argued to have that be a specific one of our objectives, but I think preserving the historic landscape includes that because we won't have an historic landscape. If it's covered well, this is a that. whole discussion for another time because we, yeah. we also deal with viewscapes, you know, and uh, anyway. Yeah. So, um, so I hope that we will endorse this under historic preservation. I think it would be reasonable to say that the benches are a matter of, recre of uh, yeah. recreation. And, and Darcy, you and Neil have already asked the Recreation Commission to look we're, at this yeah. proposal, right? We're trying to get communication from them. Yes, it's been a little slow going, but yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I guess if we have no more discussion, I would like a motion. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what would the motion be? I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not clear on what a, a motion to cover this under historic preservation funding. I would I would move. I, I will move that the historic commission um endorse create i mean we don't have we, it isn't that we approve it um and the cpa situation no i think you should approve it we should approve it i can never remember when we're to approve and when to when we're to endorse it's a bit the way i've been on this committee for six years and i'm still navigating rehabilitation preservation restoration i should have them tattooed on my arm, and I bet I'm not the only one who couldn't define exactly what each of them means. Um, I think we should, um, I, I move that we approve the proposal um, under the historic preservation rubric um, with the exception of the benches, which I believe should be a matter of recreation because they are about allowing people to walk into the cemeteries and sit down and rest. Well, there's a there's a dollar amount involved, right? It's ninety five hundred um, for the fencing, I think. There is a dollar amount. Uh, it's a thousand. It's ten thousand for um, if you if you include the removal of the um, chain link gate that's broken at West Cemetery. How do we deal with the fact that they've already gotten twelve hundred dollars, though, from Happy Valley Farm? I, I I didn't know how to factor that into the dollar amount because I don't think Doug and DeWitt, Dewitt have said, and we insist that we use you use this gift for X versus Y. Do you, Darcy? It's know how to factor that it's in. Probably for the East Cemetery, though. Do you think? Yes. Oh, yeah. It's to re. It, yeah. He is earmarking that to repair what his equipment broke. Right. Right. Yep. So maybe. But then, oh, sorry. Then there's an overall allowance for inflation, ten percent, which applies to the whole thing. But 
the benches are a different. The benches are for no. The benches are for it's it's the budget. It's the third page. The the yeah. I'm the, afraid I, the proposal is broke. no. The the proposal is ten thousand for fencing and gate removal and replacement. Let's just you know summarize it that way. Forty three hundred for seven benches. And then given the way prices are going up, the proposal included a 10% inflation allowance. So maybe it would be fair to say, I can do this arithmetic, well, that it's 11,000. It's 11,000, yeah. Sorry to back my way into that. <laughs> okay. Well, it's the one who fills out that cumbersome database. You need to know right, right, how right. much to put in which category. Right, right, right. Um, and how much to come out of which pot when we right. finally vote it. Right. Um, so I would, so the motion would be that we approve uh, the use of 11,000 minus, this is like fifth grade, 11,000 minus 1,200, which would be $9,800, up to $9,800 in this, um, for this well, no, we, we were proving the historic part, the historic preservation part of the proposal, right. not the recreation part. Or, right, right, right. But you were, uh, I think we're talking I about numbers because you, uh, but, but what, would we actually put the numbers in? I don't remember doing this with other projects. I mean, no. can't you just say that you approve the fencing and not, you yes. know, like. I yeah. think so. I think yeah, so. The money parts for the CPA to figure right, out. Right, right, right. Okay, so Judy, you were down the road on your record keeping task. Yeah. When you brought up the numbers. Okay. All right. right. Allison, if you're taking minutes, have you recorded my? <laughs> my I'm saying motion? that you you are you are moved, you've moved that the historic commission approve the cemetery commission proposal for fence replacement under the preservation rubric, with the exception of the benches, which should be considered recreational. Perfect. Thank you. Second, Darcy, you can't second, you quit. Nope. <laughs> I second it. All right, uh, all in favor. Aye. Judy, that was not a vote. How would you like to vote? I will abstain. Okay. Um, well, good, thank you. Um, I think it's a great project. I. I I want to make that clear. Even if we're not yeah. going to spend the money for wrought iron and granite, <laughs> no, which would have been pretty. But maybe well, it, would have kept, it would have kept the spirits out. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> so Darcy, thank you. Are you outside or are you just in your really dark studio? I'm in my really dark studio at the moment. Yes. Okay, okay. You can stay for other business if you want, but you can also yeah, go please. away. I'm all set. <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. All right. Good to oh, see thanks. you. Good to see you too. Um, do we have, bye-bye. Do we have any other business? Is there anything we should be doing, Judy, about any planning board, any projects that are? The Christian anything? Lane uh, marijuana cultivation at Hutchkowski's is still still in process. Um, the ZBA will meet on the fourth, and they still ha don't have this special permit approval. And the earliest that the planning board will discuss it is January 31st. And I would be surprised if that happens. But so I think if we want to, we do need to discuss it. It could be in January at the January meeting. Okay. And I have heard uh, that actually from John LaSalle that that proposal, that proposed um, marijuana cultivation project is uh, maybe off the table? What have you oh, heard? It's definitely off the table. It is definitely off the table. At LaSalle's? Yeah. Why is that, do you know? They pulled out. They, the pot growers pulled out? Yeah. Or, or LaSalle I think they out. discovered 
I think they didn't do their homework well enough in the beginning. I'm, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure John knows. They entirely, they asked for a variance. <laughs> um, that was Miss Silly. That was great. What a great, perfect Zoom moment there. <laughs> they um, wanted to, they were going to have to rebuild the greenhouses. They wanted to reposition them and put them together. And it would have meant changing the configuration of existing greenhouse in the zoning. And the ZBA voted two to one to approve it, but it had to be unanimous. So they didn't get the variance. Oh, really? Oh boy. And John thinks that they just asked for the variance knowing they wouldn't get it. So they could pull out because it was starting to be more ex look more expensive than they thought. I think it turned out that there was more wetlands on the property than they had known and they weren't gonna be able to do as much outdoor cultivation. And also the greenhouses were gonna be more expensive than they envisioned, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry it, for John. I am. I am sorry for John. It's especially bad because all of his people either retired or got new jobs. So I don't think he's right. gonna have any. Right. Yeah, well, that was good. always the challenge with that property is that those greenhouses were so out of date, they weren't really going to be useful in a commercial way for any kind of business, you know? Yeah, no, he, he's well aware of that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of sad that the, I've forgotten their names, but the people, and I remember that their initial proposal was actually quite put together and not, laugh, not laughable as <laughs> some of the others on paper, I mean, but the thought that they could have reused those greenhouses was, was. You know, I think, dubious. I think one thing that maybe has happened is that the growth of marijuana acceptance around in different legalization in so many states around the country has made the likelihood of federal marijuana acceptance much more likely, at which point it's not going to be cost effective to grow in Massachusetts and Right. I, if I were making this kind of investment, I would, I wouldn't at this point. Uh, right. It's just maybe in Florida. Right. Yeah, right. but but not in Massachusetts. And right, or, or southwestern Virginia, or something. Anywhere, you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I, I, I suspect that that's part of it, and the, the retail, the, the retail outlets are obviously over populated already and getting worse. And that's, there's gonna be a settling out there too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's, so Donna, yeah. Do we wanna update the rest of the gang on our hidden history project? Yeah, go I'd for it, what's going go on. for it. <laughs> unless you, unless, <laughs> we've, been uh, working, we've been working away. <laughs> we've been beavering away. We'll and we have a, we have a yes, meeting. We're, we're meeting this week again. We, we have a calendar now. <laughs> yep. We, we You're feel meeting this week, Chris. Yeah, we, we feel pretty confident that we have the technical side of it as in hand as we can at this point, because that was a big impediment. And we've moved on to defining what um, our broader topics might be and we're actually starting to create um lists of specific sites within those broader topics to start off with is that about sum it up it does uh, one of the interesting challenges has been that we keep going off on tangents sometimes motivated by information from I'm something listening Judy, I just Judy has sent or derica smith has you know offered an opinion um but that the discipline that's required is that everything we do has to be pinnable to a location on the map. And there are some very big topics that we're sort of parking as this might be an interesting article or presentation, but if it can't be pinned to a location on the map, it's not for this project. Um, right. I mean, um, surely we realized that when we started this, that it was gonna be geographic specific 
Yeah, but but we're much farther. Oh, I, we, actually, Darcy would have been interested because it's now been pre-pandemic that Darcy and I sat down with Kyla Jones to ask her oh, advice yes. about how to do this. Um, yeah, so I'm, I, I'm yeah. feeling pretty. Yeah, but like it's, it's feel, been a lot of fun. Okay, okay about this now. <laughs> Judy, you'll know about that threshold because of your exhibit yeah. work. Yeah, I'm not there yet. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, the, the research we've been doing, especially I think the, the newspaper uh, spelunking that we've done into newspaper archives, which wasn't a thing that was available ten years ago. You know, wasn't so broadly yeah. it is now. So it's new, new territory in a way. We're uncovering both uh, charming, quaint you know, anecdotes from the past, but also some really forgotten moments, I think, forgotten out of um, living memory uh, events, which is, is super interesting, I think. And then we share them with someone like Derica who adds her ingredients into it and we pass along to Judy who's got hers and it, the, the things are kind of swirling around in a tornado of uh, expansion. Now we're talking about just today we're talking about mining in Waitley and what is that and that's gonna yeah that's pretty cool i'm actually mm. pretty excited about the mining stuff that was going back and forth today um because hidden history in my view does not have to mean an aspect of the town's history that no one knows oh. not, or that no one has known it is something that is not commonly known or, um, or not visible today, even. Or not <laughs> visible, or not yeah. visible, exactly. Yeah, which, is, so. which is most of his, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, Susan, we're feeling that your committee's most generous $900 investment will be well spent. <laughs> 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 and we've only spent, I think, 150 of it so far. Oh, wow. You guys are <laughs> a bargain. You know? Yes. Yeah. Well, we're imagine. trying. We're trying to be uh, forward thinking too, in that we're, we've we've kind of almost set aside an endowment fund for the project because because that's kind of what it needs. We can't blow through the whole thing because we need to hold out. We're saving some money for future maintenance and additions to the project because it's it's going to be an organic thing that is never going to really grow. be done. Yeah. There'll be a start to it, but it's going to keep getting it added. It won't to ever it. finish. Yeah. So sometime this sometime in the spring between now and June, we will be ready to test it with a small, constructively critical audience, including Susan and Judy. Yeah. <laughs> we're not there yet. We're not we're not there yet. <laughs> no. Right now we have too many ideas, don't you think, Alan? Uh, yeah. That's good yeah. We'll learn yeah. what to do with. Right. Right. So um, okay. Um, well, our next meeting is uh, Monday, the 20th at, of January at 5 p.m. That is Martin Luther King Jr. Day. If just in case that is a worry for anybody, it hasn't been the last couple of years a worry for anybody. So we'll leave it. We'll leave it on that day. Um, so thank you. That's good. I, I have another meeting at 645 and I will now actually be able to eat something, which is great. Actually, you said Monday, the what? I've got the 20th Friday. of January, which is, okay. yeah, which, exactly. which is the third, which is yeah. the third um, Monday. That's fine. Just yeah. making sure I got the right day on my phone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, okay. thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Happy, Happy New Year. Holidays, everybody. Yes, Happy New Year. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye, all.